Great addition to a few board members who have been very active, Mr. Hahn, Mr. Hassan, Mr. Jackson, we appreciate the input, um, as well as uh, an additional three to five family members of various schools who have been present throughout the summer to really um, give us a great deal of input and insight on ensuring that we improve our transportation options for families, so we uh, appreciate all the input. Um, so with that, uh, on a weekly basis, as the superintendent mentioned, we met um, with a committee to focus on the implementation of transportation in Newark, um, and quickly um, came to the conclusion um, that our board must have three guiding principles moving forward. The first is safety. Um, that is our top priority to ensure that students get safely to and from school, whether you define that as walking to school, walking to a bus stop or walking to a shuttle pickup location. Our second priority is to achieve safety and efficiency. That's ensuring that the route that a family uh, uses to get to school is as efficient as possible. And finally, customer service. Uh, ensuring that families are at the core of all of, um, of our focus and problem solving. Uh, this year, uh, we are launching Safe Passages, which is a three-pronged approach. Uh, the first approach uh, should not be new to many in the room, and that is uh, the use of bus tickets for our students. Um, so we will see on the slide are uh, the policies that uh, govern the use of bus tickets. The next piece is one that is new, and that is the use of shuttle services, which is something we spoke about in the last board meeting, and I'll go a bit uh, into in a moment. But that is uh, for schools in which charter launches uh, or resightings or repurposing are taking place for the upcoming school year. And finally, uh, the third piece uh, are safe route maps. Uh, we work closely not just with NPS security with the NPD to identify safe walking routes uh, for families uh, for the upcoming school year. They will first be rolled out at our shuttle pickup locations. Uh, and then by the end of the fall, we'll go out to all MPS students. Uh, and here's the next slide is specifically around shuttle services. Something that was clear to the committee um, was that we must be able to, again, ensure that all students can get to their school match, uh, regardless of district or public charter. The next is that their pickup and drop off locations must be convenient for families. And finally, the third is that there must be, uh, all safety elements must be satisfied. We need those safety elements as shelter in the event of the kind of weather. Uh, we need that as having safety personnel, security guards, as well as folks who ensure. I'm going to get put out because Ms. Wilson should be the president. Because by Sean, you can't control nothing. And that's true. Ms. Wilson Ms. Mohammed, could control is your people. second and final okay, that's my warning. Final. Okay. I got Ms. Mohammed. All right, I got my check. Thank you. can't control nothing. As well as staff to ensure that students um, are not are getting on their right bus. In terms of eligibility, a K to eight students who attended uh, the schools listed on the slide, Maple Newton, Madison, Bergall, and Alexander Street. Uh, are eligible for the shuttle service if their families so choose to use it, um, as well as schools that are either being uh, that are being recited, um, which are ECC Clinton, Eagle Academy, Girls Academy, Miller Street, Newark Vocational, and Newark Early College. Families will be able to indicate that they affirmatively want uh, their shuttle service. Uh, so what you'll see on the slide is that an example hyperlink that will be provided to families to opt into the system. Uh, they will need to opt in by September 15th. However, it's important to note that shuttle service will start for the beginning of the school year on the 4th. The final section is safety, which is one that our committee um, focused on right, uh, predominantly for most of the summer. Uh, again, uh, we will have security staff at these locations both at, uh, when, fam when students are dropped off in the morning and picked up in the afternoon. We worked with uh, the Newark Police Department to ensure that these locations have crossing guards, uh, and have three crossing guards in particular at each location, which is an increase in the social security. We have a deficit. Every bus uh, will have a bus aid. Uh, and finally, we have coordinated with, with various police enforcement agencies to ensure that there is proper security at all essential health locations. Thank you.
um, for an update on um, uh, early childhood. Um, Excuse turn me. it over to Dr. Perkins. Excuse me. Can we can you, may I say something before we get to the next part? Unfortunately, Chair, we, sure. we typically wait for we questions until the end of the presentation, but I'll defer to speak to him. By the time we get to the next part, it's, it's going to be best. So, or take the floor. I would like to. Okay. Mr. Earl, you made that the first and second. If you want to arrest me, you're welcome to I'm going to express myself. The Office of Early Childhood. Excuse me, Dr. Perkins. Mr. Earl, I quite understand what you have said. So you can give me two or three. I'm going to give you your first. First of all, this here stuff will be in the handout for the people here. You use terms. The average person in here is not Let's ask some clarity. This is not a meeting of the superintendent. It's your meeting, Mr. Hassan. It's your board member to ask a question. And it's pertinent. And we, we tied we uh, Ms. Anderson avoiding the community question. This is changed because of community pressure. We want results. All right? Because y'all can vote another board in. If it's time. It's time. Hey, hey, you can rest me now. Nobody said okay. I'm ready. Right. 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 I want your Shame name to be on the complaint. Because all Hassan. these lawsuits, we're not suing our Mr. school we We're suing Mr. the state of New Mr. Jersey Mr. and Ms. Anderson personally. Okay. And board members that comply with it. The report to be completed so that then we can ask all the questions to ensure that they are answered. That's all I ask for, sir. Thank you. So the Office of Early Childhood has been restructured to provide comprehensive support to all of our sites, both private and in district, that serve the 6,800 plus students to make sure that they have the support they need as well as the flexibility and autonomy to run their, uh, their sites. In particular, this means that the central team will be organized around four themes, academics, student support services, portfolio strategy, and operations. And this will enable both the opportunity to specialize and to provide better support in those areas as well as to integrate the work of the pre-K team with the K-12 team and strengthen and learn from one another in terms of supporting those areas. In addition, based on the data that we have, we know the early childhood centers provide better support and better services for our students, so we're expanding those opportunities, expanding uh, opportunities for families to be able to have access to those centers in the coming year, opening up new centers uh, that will be available uh, for this new school year. And finally, I'll share that I'm pleased to share that the New York Public Schools received just today the official notice of award from the Office of Head Start to provide Head Start services to a thousand students in the coming school year. And noting that the, this group, uh, notice just came, we will provide a full report to the board at a later date. Thousand. 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 Wow. Wow. The school update. There's not a great deal of new news there. Yeah, we don't indicate um, that our eight new renewed schools, um, just like our our first ten, are on path to uh, being set up with a similar level of detail that we did with our first round. The first round failed. As far as uh, stop eight update, I'm going to ask my colleague um, wow. Mrs. Rodriguez. Wow. Wow. Um, I just want to add a few points. Um, I want to reiterate that the new titles that were created were definitely in response to our preparation for the park assessment as well as our work around the Common Core. But also, principals were asking for more opportunities to hire positions that would align with their, their needs in their schools, particularly the needs that they're seeing with students and the work that they need to accomplish to move their school work, the school forward. Um, and then secondly, we are working um, collaboratively to ensure that um, in the transition of our work around the um, civil service transition of employees that they're getting the supports that they need and um, actively ensuring that folks have access to any vacancies that exist currently within the district and encouraging them to apply for those positions. So, I just wanted to add those two points. Thank you. Um, and finally, Ms. Olson is going to give um, an update on um, this board has been briefed previously on our successful school opening team approach, um, how do we make sure that we um, are ready for day one 
Um, and so the next part uh, of this will communicate where we are in that process. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the audience. Madam Chair. Uh, the SSOT process, which stands for Successful School Opening Team, has been created and has been used for the last three years to manage issues and concerns relating to the school opening each year. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Where we are with our process right now is that we have developed various categories of support that need to be monitored, and responsible central office staff have been assigned to each category. Principals are encouraged and asked to complete a survey. That survey process begins with a pre-survey that's introduced and administered in June, which allows principals to report out on the various categories and questions. And there are some 23 questions that we ask principals in probably five or six different categories, ranging from um, the supplies that are in their buildings, the cleanliness of their buildings. Transportation will also be an issue that we monitor very closely this year as we uh, look at universal enrollment. Opening up of our enrollment center would be some of those kinds of things that we monitor to ensure that there is enough and sufficient support to ensure the success of those. Beginning this week, we will begin doing what we call hot spots. There are schools or areas that we may be looking at in depth. The screen before you shows some 24 metrics across some 60 plus locations. So you see under the various areas, enrollment, placement, special ed, staffing, materials and supplies, uh, yes, special education, school safety, environment and facilities, renew and consolidation of schools, transportation and food services. These are not the only metrics that we are monitoring, but are in fact the major ones that we look at. What you have here is um, an SSOT shot of where we are. We use the factors red, green, and yellow. Red meaning that we are marginally ready for school opening, yellow we are substantially ready, and green we are ready and go. What this means, what this particular pie chart means is that on August, excuse me ladies and gentlemen, that on August 6th, we presented that we had 41% of our schools um, ready in a ready status. Um, we had 21% of our metrics in red and 38% in green. I can tell you that this week, um, our report indicates that we have 